No points. Team captain Jeff Irving. In a recent game of Scrabble, who recently scored 194 points against you by playing the word quarrels on two triple word squares? Neil Barkley. That is correct. Christy Frank, what word does Merriam-Webster define as to affix a stamp indicating the payment of postage? To affix a stamp in the payment of postage? Yes, the answer is Frank. <laughs> Paul Sportelli, you saw this one coming a mile away. Who was the first female governor of Connecticut? Ella Grasso. That was way too easy. And Jeff Tur Jay Turvey, in which <laughs> suburb of Hamilton, Ontario, would you find the annual Dundas Cactus Festival? Dundas? And these are the players from the team that calls itself <laughs> Getty Right to the Stage. Team Captain Jason Chesworth, what is your favorite variety of theory? Music? The answer is conspiracy. At least oh! that's what he tells me. <laughs> Rina Parmar, on what Anton Chekhov classic did you base your 2018 play, The Orchard? The Cherry Orchard. Well done. Dot Ward, George Surratt perfected the pointless technique by painting thousands of these in his work. Dot. <laughs> That's it. And finally, Jenny L. Wright, true or false, you recently brought one of your chickens to the theater to audition for Gypsy. True. And these are the <laughs> players from the team known as Backstage Panic. <laughs> these shocking truths and more will be revealed as we gather to play the first match of the first series of... The Great Shaw Quiz. Now, from Television City in Niagara on the Lake, here is the host of the Great Shock Quiz, Neil Barkley. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, and welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new era in entertainment. Let me flip a coin to determine which team will go first. And I will invite team captain Jeff Irving of Jenny Wright to the stage to call it... Tails. And it's heads. So that means backstage panic goes first in the first category. And that first category is Shaw Festival History. And backstage panic will have first crack at the first five questions. Here we go. Question number one, backstage panic. Under what name did the first season of plays by George Bernard Shaw in Niagara-on-the-Lake in 1962 go by? The season of plays. Shaw Festival. Shaw Summer Theater Festival. Was summer in there? I think it was just, it was the Shaw, it's that first poster in the hallway. That's Come right. <laughs> the first poster. It's right one. outside dressing room one. And I bet you Jay knows the answer. Uh, <laughs> I work at the courthouse, so I cannot help you. Summer, Shaw Summer. Yeah, Shaw Summer guys. Festival? Let's brainstorm Shaw this one. Festival? I thought it was just the Shaw Summer Festival, like Shaw. Yeah. They didn't have theater in it. It Did it? I don't think it did. Shaw okay. Summer Festival. All right. I think we're going to need an answer. I'm going to go to the team captain, Jason Shesworth. Do you have a final answer? Oh, I'm going to say uh, the Shaw. Let's just, how about guys, Shaw Festival? Do you want, yeah. do you feel like it may be staring us in the face? Yes, I think it might be. Okay. okay. Shaw Festival. We're going to go with the Shaw Festival, Neil. Shaw Festival, I'm sorry, is not the correct answer. No. It was <laughs> Salute to Shaw. Oh, of course. Yes. The second question is, what were the first two plays presented in that season, 1962? Hey, it was definitely uh, Man and Superman, but it, no, actually, I think it was Don Juan and Hell, because yeah. they talked about fanning themselves. I thought it was... Uh, I think Canada was one of them too, wasn't it? I think, oh, I think I, it was Canada. I'm, I'm thinking Heartbreak House. I don't think so. I think it was. I don't Canada. think it was one of. I, I don't think I, it was one of the big I, ones. I think it was a reading of Don Juan and Hell. I think. Uh, again, I I can see the poster in my head. I just can't see the words. It's the yellow one, right up the by dressing room one. <laughs> Jason, you guys got a final answer. Uh, oh. Canada and something. We get Canada half points. 
Don Juan, Don Juan in hell. Don Juan in hell. Candid and Don Juan in hell. Is that your final answer? Okay, yes. You're correct. Oh. Yes. Canada and Don Juan in hell, that first Ooh. season. Wow. Oh, very good. Ten points for you. <laughs> we move on to question three. Who was the 29-year-old Englishman who became artistic director in 1967? I'm thinking Paxton Whitehead. Uh, oh, maybe. You might because be right. I, I believe Tony Van Bridge didn't Tony Van he didn't come here till his 30s. Okay, and, and it was later when he was the uh, artistic director. It was in the 70s, I think. Tony um, was like Tony came in for a year kind of as an emergency ersatz. Yeah, so it was probably, you're probably right, Paxton Whitehead. Was he British? Was he British, exactly. Sounds British. Yeah, I, pretty sure. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, or. I think we'll go with Paxton Whitehead. Paxton Whitehead is the correct answer. Well done. <gasps> Oof. All right, Oof. another 10 points for you. Now, question four. The original Blanche Dubois in A Streetcar Named Desire and later an Oscar winner for Driving Miss Daisy, Jessica Tandy spent one season at Shaw in 1968 playing Hassani Hushabai in which play? Um, Go ahead, Jenny. I believe that's Heartbreak House. Break, it's, yeah, I think it's Heartbreak House. I'm pretty sure it's Heartbreak House. Okay, well, we're gonna say Heartbreak House. Heartbreak House. And you are correct, another 10 points. All right, last question for Backstage Panic. Okay. Festival Theater opened in 1973 with which Shaw comedy set at the seaside? Oh, well, I'm pretty sure it's You Never Can Tell. Yeah, that would be. That's a seaside comedy, right? You never I don't tell. think there are any other ones. We'll go, we'll go with You Never Can Tell. Yeah. All never. right, final answer, You Never Can Tell, and you are correct. So midway through the first round, Backstage Panic has 40 points. Wow. Now on to Jenny Wright to the stage. In 1980, the Festival Theater, the festival acquired what building on Queen Street and began operating it as a theater? I'll just read it again. In 1980, the festival acquired what building on Queen Street and began operating it as a theater? Well, it's not the Value Mart. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. It's behind the Value Mart. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good. It must be. Is it the? It's out of the courthouse of the George, right? It's the George, because the courthouse was where we first started. <clears throat> George, say the George. The Royal George Theater. Final answer. The Royal George Theater is correct. Ten points. Which 1982 production featuring a star-making performance by Heath Lamberts? played on and off for three years in both Niagara-on-the-Lake and in Toronto. That's one for the pot, I think. Or is it Cyrano? Cyrano, yeah. they did it too. Cyrano. Maybe it is one for the pot. A one for the pot played in Toronto. I don't know if Cyrano did. Also because star making, I think I think he probably was a star by the mm. time he did Cyrano. Oh, okay. Yeah. I go, I'll, I'll go behind you, Jay. You guys? What do you think, Jeff? Yeah. I'll go with it. One Final for answer, one for the pot? Yeah. And you are incorrect. I'm sorry, it was Cyrano. <laughs> oh. All right. Next question. Ubu Rex in 1990 was the last in this series of little known and rarely performed oddities. Uh, I'm not sure what I understand there the was, question. There was, right. there was a risk series. Maybe... Maybe yeah. the last one on the risk. <clears throat> I, think, I think that's what that answer for your final answer, Jeff. Uh, I have nothing. Yeah. If you guys feel that definitely. It's the best I got. Yeah. Risk. Final answer. The risk series is correct. Well done. <laughs> all right. I think we all remember this. In 1992, what national ballet of Canada star played the female lead in the musical on the town? Oh, Veronica Tennant. Yes. That was yep. very weird. Yes, Veronica, Veronica Tennant, Tennant is answer. correct. Yes. Woo. And hey. Last question. In 2005, what musical became the first to play at the Festival Theater? Gypsy. Gypsy, Gypsy is your final answer. Gypsy well, final answer. 
All right. So at the end of that round, we have Jenny Wright to the stage with uh, 40 points and backstage panic with 40 points. <laughs> now on to round two, which you will be delighted to learn is a visual round. And the subject is the shape of the nation. I will read clues while a silhouette of a country is projected on the top line of this screen. Be aware that the silhouettes are not all at the same scale, so Vatican City will look the same size as Russia. Uh, not that those countries are part of it. Uh, since Panic uh, backstage went first in round two, Jenny Wright to the stage goes, uh, Panic backstage went first in round one, uh, Jenny Wright to the stage goes first in round two. All right, here's your first country. Jenny Wright to the stage. And I will read a clue. This country occupies the majority of the Iberian Peninsula. Spain. That would be Spain, right? Yeah, Spain. Uh, I think so. Because, yeah, then Portugal would be in that little... Over there? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay, final answer? Final answer, Spain. You are correct. It is Spain. All right. Oh, next. Guys! Answer. Until 1975, this would have been the shape of two different countries. Vietnam. Right. Mm. Oh. oh. Wait. Say the. What was your clue again, Neil? Until 1975, this would have been the shape of two different countries. I think I'm wrong. So are we saying both of those countries? They're the two countries that were reunited in 1975. Oh no! Vietnam is right. That's when the war ended. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Vietnam. All right. Final answer is correct. Vietnam. <laughs> All right. Number three. You'll find the Atacama Desert at one end and Tierra del Fuego at the other end of this famously narrow country. Jay is bursting to <laughs> I'm feeling a little chile. Are you? Yes. Oh. I could have chile. some chile for lunch. But chile today. <laughs> Jeff, is that cool? Chile? Chile, please. Chile is the final answer. All right. Until the beginning of the 21st century, only the Jutland Peninsula connected this small nation to the mainland of Europe. Oh, so there's a, there's a bridge. There's some, some, come, some kind of causeway or something was built yeah. between yeah. at it's the beginning of the... Do you want to say Denmark? Yeah, I'm thinking that it's one of those... Yeah, it's Nordic. Nordic. Yeah, I think I think it might be Denmark because it doesn't look like Sweden or Norway. No. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, Denmark. Final answer. Denmark. You are correct. And last question. This is our neighbor to the south. <laughs> neighbor to the south. Oh, this is our neighbor to the south. Neighbor to the south. Right. So, uh, 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 uh. Mexico. That's Mexico. That's Mexico. Mexico, but in a yeah, that's Mexico. It's a little bit different. <laughs> that's Mexico. Yeah, that's Mexico. Mexico. You're correct. That is Mexico. Very good. All right, move on to backstage panic. This landlocked African country is the world's most recently recognized sovereign state. Congo? Couldn't tell you. Don't know my African I'm country. Go with the uh, Serena. Yeah. What, yeah. Sorry, what, what did you say? Congo? I said zero. Nothing. I said. Oh, <laughs> oh I said Congo. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. What did Don't Serena me. say? I gasped. I gasped. You gasped. My non knowledge. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's it's go been in the news oh. recently because it was the most recognized sovereign state. Watch the news. I'm at a loss, guys. Sorry, I don't watch the news. What Congo? Could it be Nigeria? I was kind of thinking Nigeria's that. Nigeria has been around a long time, but the Congo I thought was like possessed by another country somehow, and now it's its, its own thing. But I could be completely wrong. But it's uh, the most guessing. recently recognized yeah. sovereign state. That's the term you used, correct, Neil? Yes. This is the the most. This uh, this clue comes directly. The Republic of Congo is not 
called the Republic of Congo anymore, is it? I, I'm totally guessing, guys. Help me out here. I don't watch the news. Look at Jay. He looks so smug. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you know the answer. <laughs> I, I, I thought that was my latest x-ray. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. He just zoned out. That's all it was, wasn't it? <laughs> We'll go with Congo. You go with Congo? Mm, I'm sorry. It's South Sudan. Right. Yes, you know, and then landlocked. Yeah. I was going to say Tanzania. Hey, Jay knew that. I can tell. <laughs> All right. This tiny principality is best known for its glamour, its casino, and its late movies. Monaco. Yes. Monaco. Jason, is that the Monaco. final answer for your team? It is, yes. Monaco is correct. <clears throat> All right. This country hosts the world's northernmost film festival every year in Tromsø, 350 kilometers inside the Arctic Circle. Oh, what about Greenland or something? What is no, that's not Greenland. It's it's either Finland or Norway, and I'm pretty sure that's Norway. Looking at the shape. Of that. I see. We go with dot. Yep. Final answer is Norway. Correct. <laughs> All right, this is the world's fifth largest country by area and sixth largest by population. Is that Australia? It's India. It's not Australia. In that's, that's an African country that edges on, it looks like it's the top, the top edge of it looks like it's on uh, the, the Arabian Sea. So I'm thinking. Oh. Is it, is it Iran? Oh, it could be. I think it's That's Iran. That's what I'm thinking. I was I was thinking of that area. Because uh, like, look at the rivers and the bays yeah, coming into this, it up at the um, north. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, it could be Iran. It's the sixth largest in population? Yes, it's the world's fifth largest country by area and the sixth largest by population. That's why I thought Saudi Arabia, but... Guys, I think it's I'm, India. You think it's India? But oh, it, you're right. You, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're. But, but doesn't you're India like have a, more population? Like, but it's more hmm? population. Well, there's okay. Like, China. who has the biggest population? Isn't India up there, like in the top three? Well, there's China. There's Ch China would be the top, but wouldn't India be second in population? I'm thinking. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's up there for sure. It is up there. And so, sit, can you say the question again, Neil? Okay, but it's one, a big one last time, and then we'll need an answer. The world's fifth largest country by area, and sixth largest by population. Because I'm looking at sixth largest by population. And I'm afraid I'm going to need an answer. Ah. Well, my guess was Saudi Arabia, but I don't think the population is right. But you my might guess be correct. is Iran, but I can, I don't know. What did you say, Jenny? I said Iran. Iran and Serena, are you saying India? Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go with India. Jason goes with India. I'm sorry, you're wrong. You, someone noted the rivers up there in the north, oh. and that's the 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 basin of the Amazon River. It's Brazil. Oh, for oh. the love. Brazil, yeah. Oh, yeah. Last question. That hole in the middle isn't a lake. It's Lesotho. No, that's African, isn't it? Lesotho. Lesotho? Lesotho is a country that is in, contained entirely within another country. And that's the country that I'm looking for. Oh, man. The only place I could think of that happening was completely landlocked in another country. It's got to be on. I, I'm lost. Don't know African continent, but no. Everybody's shaking their heads on my team. Great. Can you get? Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on, brain. I couldn't tell you what country that is, other than it's probably in Africa with the. Right. The name that you gave us. So, um, <gasps> Ivory Coast. Pick, pick, pick a Ivory Coast. Is that the country in Africa you want to pick? No, that's not a. That, uh, and I'm thinking again. 
uh, to me it's the the north the north uh the, the east, north end of it looks like it's it's on the coast okay uh, so i don't know my all right countries over there i don't know my geography give me one name jason <laughs> um burundi i'm sorry it's not burundi it's south, south africa, africa. Oh, for the love yeah uh, Lesotho, I believe, is the only major country in the world that is entirely contained within the borders of another one. So, oh, anyway, yeah. well done. At the end of round two, oh, come on, it was. Uh, Jenny, right to the stage, has 90 and backstage. Panic has 60 points. We're going to move on to the first half of round three. And this category is called Answers Within Answers. We used to call it Daisy Chains, but everyone smirked, so we changed it. Now, the upshot of this category is that the questions are unrelated, but the answers have a connection. So embedded in the answer to the first question is a clue to the answer for the second question and so on. There's five questions and they're each worth 10 points apiece. So the first question, what bearded CNN anchor hosts the Situation Room? Uh, you know, uh, different, we have a different question. That question doesn't match. Oh, oh, thank you very much for pointing that out. All right. Well, then, since you've see, since we're in that one, then we will uh, we'll go with this other question. <laughs> and I'm sorry <laughs> you were already to add to that other one. In what 1990s sitcom, principles the same, in what 1990s sitcom would we meet Philip, Vivian, and Carlton Banks? Fresh Prince, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Bel Air, your final answer. Yeah. And that is correct. All right. The second question. What popular sports shoe was introduced to the public in late 1984? Like, like Nike Air? Nike Air. Or, jo or Jordan Air? Air, jo Air Jordans. Air Jordans. Air Jordan. Air Jordan. Yes. Jordan. Air Jordan is correct. Number three. What was the full name of Jared Leto's character on My So-Called Life? Something with Jordan. It's got to be Jordan, yeah. Oh. My sister watched that one. I didn't watch that one. I didn't watch it. Uh, I'm going to go with, um, you guys have anything? No. Jordan. <laughs> I'm going to go with Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. No. That's a really good answer, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> does uh, Backstage Panic have a guess at that one? It don't even, uh, my so-called <laughs> life. I never. Full name of Jared Leto's character on my so-called life. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan isn't the right answer. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan, Jordan is not correct. Well, I'm guessing it's Jordan something. Jordan, I don't know. Uh, my so-called life never watched it. And I don't even think my kids watched it. So, Jason. Jordan, sure Jordan Smith. <laughs> Jordan Smith is not the correct answer. Jordan Catalano was his name. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you may oh. see where this one's going. In what span? Now we're going back to uh, Jenny Wright. Uh, in what Spanish region would you find the city of Barcelona? Catalan. Catalan. Uh, that... Catalonia. Oh. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, Catalonia. Is Catalonia, the thank you. And your last question. What character has been played on TV by Clayton Moore and in a 2013 film by Army Hammer? Would it be Catalonia? So it's got to be within that word. Uh, Cat Stevens. It was Cats, the musical. <laughs> and what character has been played on TV by Clayton Moore and in a 2013 film by Army Hammer? Cat. Long or something long. Long. The Lone Ranger. In 2013? Maybe. I, I think, try, sure. try it. Sure. Yeah. The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger is correct. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right. <laughs> and now you've had a few minutes to cogitate on this very difficult question uh, in the Answers Within Answers round. What bearded CNN anchor hosts the Situation Room? Do we get? Do we play or do they play? No, no, the, sorry. This is for backstage. Panic. Thank but you. you know, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> it's Wolf Blitzer. 
Yeah, uh, I don't know any CNN. I know nothing. Go ahead, guys. Wolf Blitzer is correct. All right. Yes, Jason. The video for this song won the first Grammy Award for Best Short Form Music Video in 1984. Really? The video for this song won the first Grammy Award for Best I'm going to say Thriller. it's Thriller. Michael Jackson Thriller? No, it has I to be Wolf Blitzer. 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 answer within the answer. Isn't this like oh, Wolf Blitzer has to be Wolf something? Oh. The answer oh, yeah. was Wolf Blitzer. Uh, so Blitz. Um, what about Wolf? Four. Nah. Oh, I think it's Thriller. I think it's Michael Jackson's Thriller with, no, okay. No, Janie, it has to have the word wolf or a blitzer or a blitz. I think it's blitz something. It's, it's um, I can hear it. Uh, it's 1984. Yeah, come on, Jenny, it's you and me. <laughs> Let's see, we were, uh, uh, I'm not going to say how old we were. Uh, you like the wolf? Wolf. Jason, is hungry that, like the wolf? Hungry like the wolf? That's short. Does that make 84, sense to you guys? 84, yes. hungry like the wolf? It, it, I feel like it could have been before, but I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, okay. It has to It has to be something like we have to think cryptic crosswords kind of stuff, which I don't do. So, uh, yeah, hungry like a wolf. I think we'd have to go. With that that is your final answer, and that is the correct answer. <gasps> Thank you, Jason. Hungry like the wolf. Oh, by Jason. Thank you, Dot. <laughs> All right. Duran Duran. There you go. Yep. And Duran. Yes. Great. All right. Cool. Our third question is Happy, Henry, Homer, and Harry are the four title characters in this Hasbro game, which debuted in 1978. Hungry, hungry hippo. I'm an only child. I didn't play hungry games. Hippos. Hungry, hungry hippo. I'm going to say. Hungry hippos. Hungry, hungry hippos is correct. <laughs> All right, this one's a little tricky, so you got to think about it. Whose name is honored in the annual awards bestowed by the Mystery Writers of America? Huh? That's silent. something about hip hop. Hip, it's got to be one of those Greek like hip hop. Uh, 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 Hippocrates. Hi Hippocrates. Right. Whose name is honored in the annual awards bestowed by the Mystery Writers of America? Hippocrates, Hippolyta. Yeah, you guys, come on. Uh, <laughs> hungry. Another cup of coffee. Come on. Uh, you may need a second cup of writers. coffee. For this Hippie. One. Hip. Yeah. The answer to the first one was with the other was hungry, hungry hippos. Uh, hungry, hungry hippos. Uh. Okay, now Jeff Irving's just all out laughing at <laughs> No, I'm laughing at Neil. <laughs> okay, yeah, where do you come up with these questions? This all mind right. of yours. Hippo I, the idea? Hippocrates? I say Hippocrates because yeah. I can't think of anything else. All right, final answer, Hippocrates. No, the, whose name is honored? Edgar Allan Poe's name. Mm. As in Hippocrates. Oh. Oh, very good. Oh, that's so very good. I, I, I did give a little warning. All right, and then this one, last question: Who was the creator of Tarzan of the Apes? Oh Lord. Oh. Alan. And Edgar. Edgar Alan or Poe? Yeah. Edgar. Oh, it's Alan. Alan. No, it's it's not, or is his last name Alan? Or hers. Mr. Know. Allen. Something Allen. <laughs> Allen type. Oh, Mr. Allen. Mr. <laughs> Allen is not correct. It's <laughs> Edgar Rice Burroughs. Oh, geez. Wrong entirely. <laughs> I didn't know that one All right. Well, that's pretty good. And now at the no, end. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you're here. You're lovely. No, I'm still laughing. Um, having a great time. Close. It's still now we're going into the lightning right now. This is where it could all change. Oh. This is not a deliberative round. This round, you have two minutes. Each team will have two minutes to get as many questions as possible. So I'm just going to read the question once, and whoever answers first, I don't care about team captains this time. Just shout out an answer if you think you know the right one. If you don't know it and no one says anything, I urge you to pass quickly. And not dwell on it because the answer, the goal is to get as many as possible right in two minutes. So 
I will start reading. And this now we go back to uh, Jenny Wright to the stage, gets their first shot at the lightning round. And the clock will start when I finished reading the first question. Beginning in 1916, what American icon painted 323 original covers for the Saturday Evening Post? Norman Rockwell. Yes. What Arab citadel and palace can you visit in Granada, Spain? The Alhambra. Yes. Known as the Honda Jazz in much of the world, what would we call it in Canada? Pass. Oh. That's all right. That's the Honda Fit. Fit. For 50 years, the A&P grocery chain was the largest retailer of any kind in the United States. What did the letters A&P stand for? Atlantic and Pacific. Very good. Beginning in 1860, French explorer Henri Mouot helped popularize what temple complex in central Cambodia? Oh, uh, Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat is correct. What collective name was given to the original cast of Saturday Night Live? The not ready for primetime players. Very good. What legendary CBS anchorman signed off his broadcasts by saying, and that's the way it is? Is that Walter Cronkite? It is. This author's memoir, Becoming, topped the New York Times nonfiction bestseller list for 20 weeks. Michelle Obama. Very good. The Toronto Raptors won their first NBA title in 2019 by what, beating what team? Uh, uh, Golden State Warriors. It's correct. <laughs> Who is the current president of France? Oh, um, Macron. Yes. What is the name of the fictitious chicken restaurant run by Gus Fring on the TV series Breaking Bad? Brothers Romanos. Uh, no. Oh, no. Right. That's Los, from another Los, show. Los Poyos Hermanos. <laughs> what X-Men star is slated to play Professor Harold Hill in a revival of The Music Man next year on Broadway? Uh, Hugh Jackman. Yes. What event has been postponed and is scheduled to take place at the Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee from August 17th to the 20th of this year? That would be the Democratic... Uh... Very good. Considered a national symbol, Kilmes controls more than 75% of the beer market in what South American country? Oh, Kilmes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you're out of time. Oh, he said Argentina. Did he? I said Argentina. The sound cut him off. The <laughs> sound cut out. Oh, well, maybe it doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, well, well, we'll give it to you. And is that score correct? 250 for Jenny Wright to the stage, backstage paddock at 90. <laughs> and as we go into the second half of the lightning round, you can make it all back here. Don't worry. All right. The clock will start when I finish reading this clue. What is the English translation of the humanitarian organization Médecins Sans Frontières? Doctors Without Borders. Yes. What hotel in Yukasjärvi, Sweden, needs to be rebuilt every year? The Ice Hotel. Very good. The Battle of Dien Bien Phu in 1954 was the decisive contest fought between the Viet Minh Communist Revolutionaries and which colonial forces? USA. France. No, France. France. Uh, I'll give it to you, Jason. You said France. In 1996, a 54-mile historic trail was designated between these two Alabama cities. Pass. Pass. All right. So that's Selma and Montgomery. The Westminster Dog Show has been won by this breed of terrier more than any other type of dog. Yorkshire. No, Wire Fox. What John Steinbeck novel tells the story of the Joad family attempting to flee the Dust Bowl in 1930s Oklahoma? Grapes of Wrath. Yes. What was the name of the Pope known as the Smiling Pope, who reigned for only 34 days in August and September of 1978? Pope well, John Paul. Pass. John Paul I. Carrie, Fukunaga. Carrie Fukunaga is the American director at the helm of the next film, the 25th in which storied franchise? Pass. Past James Bond. On which Canadian TV series would you meet the characters Molly, Relic, and Nick Adonidas? Beachcombers. is right. The modern gay rights movement is thought to have started in the morning of June 28, 1969, when riots broke out at what Greenwich Village bar? Stonewall Inn. Stonewall Inn is correct. Who was the pop artist who worked out of a Silver Line studio called The Factory? Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol is correct. In which city would you find the Reina Sofia Modern Art Museum? Pass. Pass. Pass Madrid, Spain. Which one of Elizabeth Queen Elizabeth's children has never been divorced? Andrew. Nope. Wrong. Oh, Edward. Mix rye whiskey, sweet vermouth, and bitters, and then top it off with a barrel. You got a Manhattan. Oh, <laughs> hey, I knew that one. 
Uh, which poet wrote something there is that doesn't love a wall and? Any answer? What was the question? Which poet wrote, wrote something there is that doesn't love a wall? Best. And it's Robert Frost in the poem Mending Wall. All right. Backstage panics at 170. Jenny right to the stage at 250. It is not over yet, backstage panic, no matter what you might think, because now we're at the final round. Feels the over. Final, the final <laughs> round is worth 100 points. <gasps> backstage panic, if you get this, and Jenny Wright to the stage doesn't get it, you've won the game, so. All right. The same question for both of us this round? The same question for both of you, but what we're gonna ask is that uh, backstage panic, mute your computer sound, or take out your headphones, and give us a signal when you've done that. So you can't hear me, great, all right. So, now, Jenny right to the stage. Uh, what I'm gonna ask you to do, Jeff, do you have a piece of paper at hand? I can. And a pen? Yeah. I'm gonna ask you, once the, uh, the 30 seconds are up, to write down your answer to this final round question, but do not show it to us. Just keep it hidden while we ask the second team and then we'll reveal both answers okay. at the same time. All right. So Neil, we can discuss amongst ourselves, we yes? We can discuss amongst yourselves because the other team can't hear you discussing right now. Jenny Wright stinks. <laughs> just checking, I'm just checking. Someone, someone had to say it. Uh, all right, the category, <laughs> for the final round is the Nielsen ratings. And the question is, in the 1999-2000 TV season, a program of what genre landed in the number one most watched position for the season? The first time this had happened since 1955. So again, the 1999. I'm sorry. Good. I can't hear you. <laughs> I need to hear the question again. All right. Emily, is it possible or Alan, is it possible for us to have one more time? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Who wrote that awful music? It's so annoying. <laughs> oh, dear. Very dramatic moment there. All right. The question is, one more time. In the 1999-2000 TV season, a program of what genre landed in the number one most watched position for the whole season? It was the first time that had happened since the 1955-56 TV season. So what I'm looking for is the genre of show that was number one for the season. Okay, so can we talk? Yeah. yeah but we, can't hear each other. we can't hear each other though. We can't hear each other over the music. Alan, I would. Uh, maybe... Sorry, that was uh, good in the beta and the not now. So, 30 seconds starting now. <laughs> like, not reality TV, because they wouldn't well, have done that. I wonder if it yeah. was, a, was it a news program? Because I'm thinking, what would happen in that? Or a variety show? 1955 56, like, what would have been popular then? Would have been uh, variety, news? I would say news. <clears throat> in the 2000s, oh, variety show. Oh, maybe like um, but what uh, would... American uh, Idol. Oh, like a talent show. Yeah. Oh. Or quiz show. A quiz show. Yeah. I think we're yeah. not... that really big in the. Sorry, Ten, seconds. Ten yeah. seconds. Quiz show or variety? I think variety show. Variety show. <laughs> <laughs> variety show. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So have, you, have you got your answer? Yes. All right. Now, can we ask? We all agree on that, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's ask bas Backstage Paddock to unmute themselves and to turn the sound on. <laughs> all right. Actually, and, and we ask uh, Jenny Wright to stage, turn your sound off. Do we keep, it oh. says turn our sound on. Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right, so. Jason, Karina, Dot, and Jenny, you can all hear me? Yes. Excellent. Yes. All right. So uh, we are going to give you the question. We will not play 
the very fearsome music while you deliberate, but we encourage you to deliberate over this question, but you only have 30 seconds and I will read it, I will read it twice. The question in the Nielsen ratings is, in the 1999-2000 TV season, a program of what genre landed in the number one most watched position for the season? The first time that had happened since 1955-56. One more time. In the 1999-2000. I'm going to say it was comedy. Read it again. Okay, I'm reading it one more time. 1999-2000 TV season, a program of what genre landed in the number one most watched position for the season? And that was the first time that had happened since 1955-56. Dope opera. I'm going to go with game show, guys. Mm. Oh, my guess is soap opera. Um, yeah, yeah the on. General Hospital and those ones, they, they've been running, and it would have been 55, 56. That would have been in one of the top ones, maybe? Then this is for nighttime shows. I'll just point that oh, out. Oh, okay, nighttime shows. Oh, so then, game show. Yeah, probably a game show then. Yeah. Reality TV was coming back at that oh. time. Which I think, I think we can, like, that's what I'm saying. All right. So what is your final answer? Write it down on a piece of paper, Jason. Do you have a piece of paper? I'm sorry. I didn't get that right. note. Then hold I... on to that answer while we reveal to the other team. Have you guys all, Can are you hearing me? Jeff Irving? I have paper. I'll write it down. Jeff Irving, Christy Frank, Paul Sportelli. Turn your sound up, guys. They need to see it at the top of their screen. That's right, Jeff. Yes, you. Yeah, that's right. Desworth, I wrote it down for you. Uh, all right. Can you guys all hear me? Jeff, Christy, Paul, and Jay, you can all hear me? Are all we right. allowed to hear also? Okay. So first off, I'm going to ask Jeff to reveal the answer that Jenny Wright to the stage has. And it is... A variety, variety show. And uh, Jenny, you said you were writing it down? And Jenny wrote down game show. Uh. And the correct answer is game show or quiz show. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah. I'm a millionaire. Unbelievable. Since the $64,000 question. Wow. What? That's been the number one show for the season. Oh, wow. Which means I, um... that Backstage Panic has scored a come from behind coup <laughs> and has won the first <laughs> game. Congratulations, guys. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. That was, that was nail biting. I guys. thought you were going to absolutely crush us. <laughs> yeah. I, I just ahead. finished. Of course, Variety Show was coming up right after Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, American Idol then debuted and was number one for many years, but oh. one year of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Well, guys, thank you so much for playing. It was quite a raucous ride. It was fun. That <laughs> was fun. It was yeah. fun. Thank you, Neil. Thank, thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. And everyone backstage. We look yeah. forward to seeing uh, backstage panic in, uh, I, I think it's in four weeks, wow. uh, to face off against in our first semifinal game against the winners of next week's match, next week's match between. Okay, Serena. <laughs> Let's get together. So qualified. I'm, well, I've never even gotten a board right in jeopardy. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> but you're you back. Great. Dude. You're right to the top, Parmar. Right to the top. All right, before that, keep your masks on and your friends at a distance until we meet again to play another round of... The Great Shaw Wheel!
This is Tom Camus speaking. The Great Shaw Quiz is a Tim Carroll, Tim Jennings production.